Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us and welcome to Game Night in the Region on the Region Sports Network. Streaming worldwide on the internet at Facebook.com slash Region Sports and Region Sports. Com. We come to you tonight from Lake Central High School as the Region Sports Network presents the Lake Central Indians taking on the Chesterton Trojans in a DAC Boys Basketball Showdown. I'm Michael Brighton of the play-by-play -play for tonight's ball game, and joining me with the color analysis is Mr. Mike Jamia. Mr. Jamia, how you doing tonight? I'm doing outstanding. I love this gym, and I love the fact that we have some DAC basketball here tonight. It's going to yeah. be a great time. DAC is one of the best... Conferences to watch on a Friday night. There's a lot of good ones, obviously, but uh, nothing beats the DAC on a Friday evening, especially when you have one of the, if not arguably, the top team in the entire state of Indiana in Chesterton Trojans coming out here visiting on the floor tonight. They are coached by Mark Urban, who got his start right here at Lake Central. Yeah, Mark Urban was a girls coach prior to being a boys coach. Uh, he was a girls coach at LC for quite some time. And in his sixth year here at Chesterton, now he's 109 and 30. He is one of the best coaches in the conference. And that is saying a lot because this conference is loaded with great coaches. And he's arguably one of the better coaches in the state, in my opinion. Yeah, so absolutely. his teams are always prepared, very disciplined. And so what I... I think, when I think of Mark Urban, to be honest with you, I think of a great game coach. You know, it's one of those things where you can watch a team and see if, they're a good, if their coach is a good practice coach because they execute well, they run through their sets, you can see what they're trying to do. And not only is he that, but he's a great game coach. He knows how to manage a game. He knows when to call appropriate timeouts. He makes very good subs. He rides the hot hand when it's needed. He's able to get guys in positions where they're going to be successful. He knows when to slow it down. He's very, very good game coach. He's got a lot of his wins in some performances where his team wasn't playing the best, but he found a way to win. He's just an outstanding coach, and he's this is an outstanding team that he has this year. Yeah, absolutely. They are 14-0. and this season and they have played some really really good teams and you know you had a lot of praise to say for Mark Urban and when I talked to him pregame he had a lot of praise for the other coach on the other side and that's Dave Malaznik because Dave's really the guy that was kind of a mentor to him coming into the coaching ranks in a lot of ways and when I talked to him about that he, he really had like I said a lot of praise to say for coach Malaznik and a lot of it had to do with the fact of really helping him learn how to run a program and I have said numerous times, especially when I do Chesterton games, when you are a head coach for a varsity basketball team or football or whatever, it's not just, you don't focus on just the, the varsity team. It is, you are going all the way down to the middle school levels, making sure that those guys are, are getting to your brand of basketball. And he really attributes a lot of that success that he has. And it's showing right now, especially here in his sixth season, he attributes a lot of that to what he learned under Coach Malosnik. Uh, along the way in his years here at Lake Central. So you're looking at, like, as, you, as you said, one of the best coaches in the state. You're looking at Dave Malosnik, who is in his 18th year as a head coach, two of the very best in Northwest Indiana here tonight. Yeah, Malosnik has over 240 wins here at LC. Mm -hmm. And you, you mentioned culture, and you mentioned program building. Remember, culture eats strategy for breakfast. You can know X's and O's. You can get your guys ready. But at the end of the day, culture is everything yeah if you if you do not have the culture in place you're not going to be able to do anything else it starts there and people talk about when they build a program you have to win at the top first in order to get everybody else to buy in and being able to do that year in and year out is what has these programs as good as they are all right so we've talked about the coaches we're gonna be talking about the teams here when we come back you're watching game night uh, in the region on the region sports network the only game in town hi I'm Crowell Company's Lantern Man. I'll cover your motorcycle. I'll be with you on the water. I'll be with you on the snow. I'll cover your insurance needs wherever you go. I'll be at Crowell Agency from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. As Crowell Company's Lantern Man, I'm your insurance superhero. Crowell Company's the insurance professionals in Highland, Maryville, and Michigan City. Did you know? Wow, they'll prepare fresh fish while you wait. Did you know? They make over 40,000 donuts from scratch every week? Did you know? They offer 23 different deli platters for your party? Did you know? 
They have freshly chopped fajita mix ready to cook. Did you know? They have the best fried chicken in the area. Did you know? They offer our signature curbside service 14 hours a day. Strack and Van Till, now you know. From schools to stadiums, hospitals and bridges, everywhere you look, Union Carpenters are building Indiana. With jobs and skilled trades in high demand, there's never been a better time to start building your future. As an apprentice, you'll earn a debt-free college degree, earn while you learn, and receive great benefits like health care and retirement. So what are you waiting for? Visit Carpenters.com to learn more. Visit Carpenters.com and start building your future today. With electrical services from Economy Electric Heating and Cooling, you can radiate the perfect amount of light and energy into your home. From rewiring and code upgrades to ceiling fans, lighting, security, and more, Economy Electric Heating and Cooling's trained electricians will make sure you can enjoy your home on full power all the time. For a free estimate on electrical work, call Economy Electric Heating and Cooling at 219-923-4441 and you can visit them on the web at 4ajobdoneright.com. That's the number 4ajobdoneright.com. Welcome back to Game Night here on the Region Sports Network. we got Mike and Mike working tonight. Mike Brenner, Mike Jamia working here on the Region Sports. I'm not worried about Nathan Laird, but... We do have the great Bob Guerrero working camera here, so we're getting excited for, uh, for this one. we got the band out here at Lake Central tonight. This game looks very well attended. Uh, quite a few fans over here on the Lake Central side. A lot of fans over on the Chesterton side as well. A large student section for Lake Central. So uh, this one is going to be this one's gonna be hyped tonight. Oh, yeah. And I love the LC Pep Band. During the break, they were playing a little bit of Rocky uh, theme Theme song, theme music. There, I couldn't stop you from jumping. You were uh, you were shaking the broadcast booth a little bit up here. <laughs> hey, stick and move, baby. Stick and move all day. It's a Friday, so it's been a long week, but sticking and moving all week and into the weekend. He's got the he's got the BFE Big Friday energy playing right now. <laughs> all right, let's take a look at the Lake Central Indians, eight and seven on the year, and. It doesn't sound like an impressive record, but Lake Central has played some really, really tough teams. In fact, I'm going to give credit to Nathan Laird. He was crunching some numbers earlier today. And of those seven losses, those teams that they have lost to, those seven teams, have a combined record of 73 and 30. So it's not like Lake Central's losing to just chumps out there. They're losing to some pretty good teams. Yes, one and two in conference play, but this DC, DAC is so loaded that you know they're, they're kind of just making their way through. But when you play those better teams throughout the year, and Chesterton is not a slouch either. They're playing tough competition themselves. It helps you when you get ready for tournament time, and that's not too far down the road. No, it's not. And you mentioned the DAC. The DAC, they beat up on each other all year. Laporte beat Lake Central earlier in the season. They had a, had a tough go at it in their holiday tournament. They had to play South Bend, Washington first game of the year, too, and that's always a tough task, especially in South Bend, Washington. Uh, that team's athletic. They get up and run. They press you, too. So, yeah, Lake Central, they have some, you know, losses here on the schedule, of course. But like you mentioned, they were against some very, very good teams. And being battle-tested going into the tournament is everything really experience matters you you win you learn more from losing sometimes than you do winning so we'll see it hopefully it's a, uh, a tight one tonight here at home you have the number one team in the state in the ap poll and the ibca coaches poll so if you can't get up for that i don't know what you're getting up for so i think they're going to really bring it tonight so i'm excited yeah i think dave's going to be uh dave is going to be shooting his uh best shots here at the chat and that's that's the thing for the chesterton trojans they know they're getting everyone's best shot over the course of the year and that's just what happens when you are one of the top teams in all the polls and one of the top teams in the conference and uh yeah just what happens you got to deal with those things purdue knows all about that as well they get everyone's best shot in big 10 play yeah chesterton <laughs> <laughs> chesterton yeah they're uh i say that as an iu fan who we probably you know yeah <laughs> chesterton biggest game on everyone's schedule this year so it, it really is I'm, I'm looking forward to uh February 18th, though, that should be a fun one as they host the Valparaiso Vikings. That'll be a fun kind of almost end-of-the-season matchup for both of those teams. As we're getting some announcements here, getting ready for the national anthem. With that, we'll tell you our Friday night forecast brought to you by our friends at Economy Electric Heating and Cooling. Tonight's forecast 
is a balmy 19 degrees outside. Very, very frigid, although it's, a lot, it's about, what, 20, 30 degrees warmer than we had here on, what, Wednesday? Wednesday was brutally cold around here in the region. That is brought to you by our friends at Economy Electric Heating and Cooling, keeping you cool in the summer and cozy in the winter. All right, fans will rise to their feet, and we will tune you in to the national anthem brought to you by the Lake Central Pet Band. All right, a wonderful job by the Lake Central Pep Band, and we are just moments away from introducing our starting lineups for the Chesterton Trojans and the Lake Central Indians. All right, let's take a look at the Chesterton Trojans first. We will name them as they hit the floor. First onto the floor, number one, the sophomore Tyler Parrish. Number two, Travis Grayson, the senior. Certainly, you've got to keep your eyes on. But number three, Owen Guest, the junior. Justin Sims, the sophomore. Certainly, you've got to keep your eyes on over the next few years. And then you got the senior, the quarterback, Chris Mullen. He's wearing number 21. Then coached by Mark Urban in his sixth year with the Chesterton Trojans. The student section starts a slow applause as we get set for the Lake Central lineup. Oh, we got a little music theatrics. Oh, well, Alan Parsons project, Chicago Bulls. First onto the floor, number 34, the junior, Carson Collin. And on another junior, number 32, Brandon Escobedo. Here comes another junior, Miles Yekic, number one. Senior, number zero, Ethan Knopf. And on number four, another senior, Jaden Clayton, will hit the floor. And they are coached again by Coach Dave Malosnik in his 18th season at the helm here with Lake Central. All right, we are ready to tip things up. One thing of note, ever since Mark Urban has taken over at Chesterton, he has defeated Lake Central the past five seasons. So he's looking for win number six in a row here against his former school. As Grayson will control it first for Chesterton. Trying to feed it inside, he gets it back on the right elbow. Now trying to drive to the right box, trying to lay it home, can't get it to go. Ethan Knopf gets the rebound. Here comes Yekic up the floor, looking to the middle. It's an errant pass, trying to find, trying to find Colin there, but that gets just a little bit off his fingers here. So two possessions for both, or one possession for both teams each. Couldn't come up with any points. Mullen given to Parsh Parrish in the wing for the first points of the game, and it's a big three-pointer to start Chesterton up. Parrish does a great job of coming and catching that ball and getting it up in rhythm. Drills the three-point basket. That's our first one of the night. Yekic dumps off to 
Colin there for the first LC points. And that's a nice answer coming back and going all the way down the floor. Chesterton trying to do the same thing, but they will pull this one back out. Yeah, being able to respond by getting all the way down the floor and getting into the basket area and dumps one off for an easy basket. And Grace, Grayson makes it look easy, too. Grayson faked the three and then with a little dribble drive right into the paint and scoring easily. Puts Chesterton up by three early on here. Feeding inside to Clayton on the block, trying to feed it up there. Gets the foul, tried to put it home. It does not fall, but he will go to the line and shoot two. Yeah, Lake Central doing a very good job of responding after made baskets for Chesterton. So Chesterton drills a three. They come all the way down. They get the ball into the basket area, dumps it off for an easy two. Grayson comes. He gets a layup. They get the ball into the block. They're shooting free throws now. Jaden Clayton. And that's, and that's how you're going to beat a really, really good team is you have to be able to beat them in paint touches, getting the ball to the basket area, getting to the free throw line, and knocking down your foul shots. And that's exactly what Clayton can do. Two for two from the line makes it a one-point game. So Grayson. Given to Guest. Guess is one of those guys that Coach Malosic was talking about. Yeah, obviously you got Mullen and Grayson out there, but Guess has got to keep your eye on. A little jump step and a little right-handed floater for Travis Grayson. Yeah, Travis Grayson, he's so athletic, so explosive, able to get into the paint, but seemingly at will. He makes it look so easy and gets an easy deuce. Colin trying to find his way home. Rattles around, won't go. Escobedo fighting for the rebound, and he's going to get tied up, trying to fight and get Mullen off of him, but it's going to be called a tie-up before he can do that. Big rebound by Escobedo. That's going to be a matchup to watch tonight, folks, as Sims and Escobedo are going to go after it on the blocks. Uh, Sims was working both blocks earlier on offense. Escobedo able to get an offensive rebound there. Well, this is just another spot where Escobedo and Mullen can, can do battle. They do it on the football field, and now they're doing it here on the hardwood floor as well. Grayson bringing it up the floor. Trying to go against Miles Jekic. Gives it off to Sims for three, and it banks home. Sims with the trailer three after getting the rebound, and that's the thing, you gotta have eyes on Sims. Sims can get beat you in so many different ways. So being able to make sure that you do not allow him to get that trailer three, that opportunity. Clayton with the touch right now. Giving it to Yekic. Off to the left, trying to drive inside the lane, dumps it off to Escobedo, it's picked off. Now trying to go here to Sims. Sims trying to lay that one up, and Ethan Knopf saying, you're not scoring this one, sir, not in my house. Yeah, Tyler Parrish, great court vision, able to get the ball up in transition, because that's the thing. If you're Chesterton, you're going to want to play with pace. You're going to want to really run against this LC team, really get out. Well, they give it to Mullen. He had an easy shot and a nice block there from behind by Colin, and it should have really been an easy bounce pass right in and a layup for Mullen. He just couldn't control the inbound pass. Yeah, it doesn't, come up, it doesn't come away with it cleanly, doesn't go up quickly, and he gets blocked. And that's definitely something that's not part of normally, normally part of Mullen's game. He's very good. Escobedo getting around the defense here and knocks this one down. Yeah, I love that middle move by Escobedo. He felt the defender applying pressure, guarding him strong on one way and went the other. Travis Grayson, absolutely unbelievable shot there. That's another candidate for our IKORCC play of the game. Really just making it happen there as he drives to the... Drives inside the lane there. Escobedo looking for an open man. It's Colin. Now Clayton off to the left. Escobedo thought about three, driving inside, turning at the elbow. And Colin has it poked away. Here comes Parrish. Parrish into the lane, throws it up, gets fouled, and we got guys hitting the floor. Yeah, great steal by Parrish. Way to take it all the way. Draws the foul. He'll shoot two. And, if you, uh, you know, obviously the IHSAA has been a big, big proponent on, you know, sportsmanship and, and crafty play there. You notice Mullen helped Escobedo up. There's two football guys helping each other out there, but not to mention the fact that it's just good sportsmanship in general. Yeah, absolutely. They're, they're competing at, you know, I would say the highest level in Indiana High School. You know, the DAC is not bigger. There's nothing bigger than the DAC. It's right up there. And so they understand how the competitive nature is in both sports. Great kids, great athletes. All right, so we'll have a 30-second timeout, so we will keep this here. And Tyler Parrish will have one more from the line. Coach Malosnik doing a little bit of gamesmanship there and kind of icing him a little bit before he shoots that second one. Leads 
Not too bad right now. It's still single digits as of right now. But the thing you have to keep if you're Lake Central, you don't want that lead to grow too exponentially. You want to try to keep it within that 10-point margin, I would think, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's the thing. I always say that there's uh, a rule of sevens when it comes to basketball because basketball is a game of runs. So if you have a lead of seven points, your main objective after that is to extend it by seven to 14 and then to 21. 21 is usually a kill shot. If you are within seven, you want to get it to nil. You want to tie the game. If, it's, oh, if you're down by more than seven, you want to at least get it to seven and work your way back that way. There you go. That was a lot of sevens in there. That's yeah. Parrish. <laughs> Didn't let that one bother him. So 14 at six, your score. Make sure you stay with it after the game as we'll name the crowd company's Lantern Man superhero of the game. They are the insurance superheroes. Malaznik in the game for Lake Central now. Mitch Malaznik. Clayton driving baseline, dishes out to Malaznik, who has three point range ability just off the mark there. So here comes Grayson up the floor now. Gives it to Parrish for three. He knocks it down, and he's amped up on that one. That's two triples already in this one to go with two free throws. Yeah, Parrish, he's great in transition, not just if he gets a steal and going all the way coast to coast, but running his transition lanes very well, got to exactly where he needed to be on that wing, caught the pass in rhythm, fired it, drilled it. Given into Escobedo, fighting for his shot. It's going to be just short. Rebound comes down to Sims, and we'll have a foul here against Lake Central. Might be against Escobedo. If it is, that'll be his second. Yeah, it is his second, so that's something you want to pick up if you're Brandon Escobedo early in this one here with 3.31 left to play in the opening quarter. So he will take a seat, and Colin will head back in for Lake Central. Jekic trying to poke that one away from Grayson, but Grayson able to keep. Left side, laying it home, gets the bucket and the foul. Beautiful basket. Did, oh. They do call the foul. I, if er, he pointed to, to uh, Urban. I thought that he had called maybe a timeout or something oh. before the drive. Is So Jekic just called for the foul. I didn't mean to cut you off, Mike. No, Sorry. no, no, no. You're fine. No, that was an outstanding basket. Great job of under of having body control and understanding where you are in relation to the rim, being able to stretch that right arm and get the ball up and into the basket. So he completes the three-point play. Clayton dishes out to Malaznik, who pulls up for three. He knocks that one down. Malaznik certainly has that range, and that's what they're going to be looking to him for to try to keep this thing close. Yeah, that's a big basket here early to kind of stop what, you know, it seems to be a little bit of a drought offensively for Lake Central, although they've been able to drive baseline at will. Ethan Knopf with the jumper, no good. Yeah, so again, being able to take a baseline and create, they've gotten a couple good looks off there. Grayson dishes up to, or dishes out to Varieties, but he travels. So we've got a timeout here. Sorry, double checking with Nathan. We're trying to make sure we have the score right. They have it 20 to 10 on the board. We think it might be 20 to 9. Hold on, three. Yeah, I have nine, unless I missed a free throw somewhere. Well, in any case, if you're staying with us, make sure you stay with us after the game as we will name the IKORCC play of the game, brought to you by the Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio Regional Council of Carpenters. Also make sure to stay with us as we will name the Region Sports Network Blue Collar Player of the Game. Brought to you by the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. The only thing I can think of is maybe one of the shots that we thought were twos, they ruled th a three. Mm, perhaps. But we'll... Something that we'll hope maybe get straightened out here. Ethan Knopf looking for his inbound player, and he's got Jaden Clayton. Dorian Beatty in the game for Lake Central now. Beatty with the basketball. Dropping to his left, gives off to Clayton. Chesterton doing a good job of talking on defense. And closing out on shooters. 
That's one of the more underrated things in basketball, certainly, is being able to communicate. And it's not underrated in a bad way. It's just as, as we have a travel here against Chesterton. It's one of those things that just seems to kind of go by the wayside, but it's so important in basketball. Yeah, and the thing, too, is I think part of it is the reason why it's undervalued by many people is because it's so hard to identify. So you really, it's hard to see it when you're watching it on television or you're watching it on the Internet. But when you're in person, you have a much you're much more capable of being able to witness and seeing players talk on defense. Malaznik for three in the corner again. Another big three by Malaznik, and it looks like Lake Central here is going on a little bit of a mini run here now that they've gotten the ball game to within seven points. I was gonna just I was just going to say they're within seven there. Yeah. There's your, your lucky number. So they got it to seven. They need three stops, three scores, and they're back right in it. Could take the lead if they can do that. Ooh. Yeah, they're going to say he stepped out of bounds, and... I, was, I, I always seem to watch when players are extremely close to that line, and I was watching to see that he did step out, and from my vantage point, he did not. Now, obviously, the referee is right there, so I, I don't like to go against the officials, especially when they are got the front row seat, literally. Yeah, they say that. Sean Casper in the game for Chesterton now. Carson it's Parrish also in the game. I say that, you know, I, I think the old phrase goes something along the lines of players sometimes want to ref, coaches want to play, and refs just want to watch the game. Well, the pickoff attempt, and this is a bad pass here, and Ethan Knopf goes down in a heap. Looks like he'll be okay, just kind of probably buckled a little bit, trying to change his momentum going from one way to the other to get that pass from Malaznik. Yeah, a little bit of an errant pass. He had to, you know, kind of stop on a dime there and try to, you know, go and meet that pass, and in doing so, Takes a little bit of a fall. The ball Two. goes out of bounds. Now they got to get a stop here with under a minute in the first quarter. Mullen with the basketball for Chesterton. With a nice seven-point lead at the moment. Trying to feed inside. Looking for a high-low action. Now here's a three-point shot in the corner, and they get it to fall. You know, that's just... That was Sean Casper with the three. Yeah, that's great execution. Lake Central went into a zone, and Chesterton able to get the ball to the elbow and then dish out for the open three, finding a soft spot, finding a window in that zone. Ethan Knopf trying to find his way through, really doing a good job finding Colin, and he's right in the right place at the right time and passes that one back. They're going to say, well, it's going to go out of bounds. There's no tip involved, so we're going to have to see who it's off. They're going to say it's Chesterton basketball there. Yeah, Knopf's calling for a tip there. I mean, he had a sweet double crossover, but then throwing that ball with one hand, you know. So far, that's one of the big issues that we're seeing with Ethan Knopf's game so far tonight. I don't know if that's a, I don't see every Lake Central game. So he just had a couple of uh, involved in some errant passes at the moment. So if Lake Central can t clean those things up, I mean, those are some good possessions that they could be scoring points on. Yeah, you can't have unforced errors against the number one team in the state. So obviously, obviously the one tr coming to him was not his fault. Correct, but. correct. But I'm saying as a team generally. Yes, yes I agree with you. Riding in here, this is Parrish. Parrish with a run hand floater, no good. Two seconds left. Got to push this one up. Not watching Colin. It won't be good if he got it to go. Wasn't watching the time there. But it is a 10-point game at the end of one. You're watching Game Night on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Java Wave at your local Family Express is the perfect way to get your day started or keep you moving at any time. With 12 freshly ground bean-to-cup flavors to choose from, Java Wave at Family Express has just what you're looking for, whether it's hot or iced coffee. To see all of the delicious flavor options and to find a Family Express near you, log on to FamilyExpress.com slash Java Wave. The team of sports medicine experts at Orthopedic Specialists of Northwest Indiana is committed to getting athletes back in the game with a focus on not only helping patients recover from injuries, but helping improve athletic performance to prevent injuries. Orthopedic Specialists provides the most advanced, comprehensive care to their patients. To learn more about all Orthopedic Specialists can do to help rehab and prevent athletic injuries, visit them on the web at osni.org or call them at 219-923-3300 orthopedic specialists of northwest indiana providing world-class care to northwest indiana for over 20 years welcome back to game night here on the region sports network mike brander mike jamia nathan laird bob guerrero with you as well start of the second quarter 
Ten point ball game. Chesterton with the ball first. Gives to Travis Grayson. Getting inside, this is Sims. Out of Mullen down near the baseline or near the block, trying to come back up. That's just a team that has really good momentum going. It looked like it was going to be an errant pass as we have a three point basket up. No good. Grayson with the rebound. Yeah, really good look there generated by Grayson, able to stop and go. Get a corner three opportunity there. Mullen fighting his way there, can't get it to go. No foul call, so Lake Central with a stop. Can they get a score to bring this within a few? Single digits trying to tap that one back home. They can't get anything to go. Chesterton just too relentless off the glass. Grayson give to Mullen for three. Rattles around and falls home. Never a doubt for Chris Mullen. Oh, Chris Mullen gets it done on both ends of the floor. Can get it done in the post, on the perimeter. Great job by Travis Grayson, too, to fake a pass to make a pass. Malalznik for three. Jake Smith in there for Lake Central. Trying to get that one from Malaznik. Key rebound there by Colin, able to keep it alive and give the Lake Central Indians a second chance here. Down 13. Well, that's going to be one of the things. We talked about Coach Urban as... This one put up by Colin, no good. But we talked about Urban working so closely with Malaznik over the years. And trust me, he has watched Mitch Malaznik grow up as Grayson tries to get that one to go. Can't get it to go. Gets a second chance. Still can't go. Rebound is wild. We got bodies hitting the floor. It's still live. And they're going to say it is off of Jake Smith. So it'll stay here with Chesterton. But trust me, Coach Urban knows how well Mitch Malaznik can shoot. So you know that he already has a little scouting report more so than maybe a lot of other players. Yeah, and it... And so, so far tonight, Mitch Malosnik was able to get an open three, the one he missed, the first one of the game that he took. The second one he took, he darn near fell over as there was a hard closeout, and he drilled it anyway. So they are definitely aware of the assignment tonight. Got to close out on Malosnik as well as the other uh, shooters here for Lake Central. Feeding down underneath to Sims. He's got five points tonight. Yeah, Sims impressed last year as a freshman. Yes. And he's growing and blossoming into quite the player here in the DAC. Clayton pulling up for three. A little too long. Rebound comes down to Colin, though. Clayton again. Jumper. Still no good. A little too long on these, on these shots for Lake Central. So if they can get some of these to start falling, they could bring this a little bit closer. But Chesterton, again, as we said, relentless on the glass. Yeah, they're certainly getting second chance opportunities. You just got to capitalize on them. But Carson Collin doing an outstanding job on the offensive glass so far. That's another thing here for Chesterton. If they can limit the, the it's like what the third or fourth travel violation against them, if they can cut cut down on that, this is going to be a a very hard game for or a very long game for Lake Central. Yeah, and and likewise to Lake Central, they got to cut down on some unforced errors too. They've been able to do that and get some second chance opportunities, but like you mentioned earlier, shots just haven't been falling as of recent. Beatty giving off to Clayton, who goes baseline. Here's the jumper. There it is. Yeah, that's very similar shot that he took on the previous possession, the one he missed. This time now on the right side of the floor, gets that one dribble pull up to fall. It'll be a 30-second timeout here taken by Chesterton, so we'll keep it right here. Brings it at a 13-point ball game. Certainly Lake Central's probably uh, wishing it was a little bit closer, obviously, but uh, Chesterton's happy with the lead right now, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, Lake Central, you know, they, hope it's they were hoping that it'd be closer at this point, but at the same time, they knew what they signed up for tonight. They knew what they were getting themselves into. It's going to be a grind. It's going to be a long game where you're going to have to play focused. You're going to have to play disciplined, and you're going to have to do it all night. And so they knew that coming into it. And Chesterton, they're, you know, 14-0, but they're not complacent. And they're looking to go out there and finish games every game that they play. They've done so this entire time this season. And they, you know, want to extend this lead. So, you know, it's a true battle tonight in the DAC. And we have, obviously, a great crowd on hand here tonight. Hasn't played a factor too much tonight, but Chesterton has definitely showed out tonight with their fans. Lake Central, as you can see probably on your screen, has a very large student section. Uh, looks like they have the Hawaiian theme going tonight. We didn't get the memo. We should have, uh, should have checked in on that. Yeah, absolutely. I guess that means we'd be for Lake Central. We're not trying to do that. True. That, that's a good point. That's a good point. But I want to be thinking of warmer days as well. I, I would be thinking of warm weather. That would be phenomenal right about now. I'm not a fan of the cold. 
No, no. Southwest flies to Hawaii, I think, now. I'm a big Southwest guy. And uh, we got a foul here against Chesterton. Our colleague Larry Babcock with the call. A little charge. And that will be against Owen Guest, his first. Owen Guest, he uh, had an opportunity for three created by Travis Grayson driving baseline earlier, but he missed it. Folks, do not expect him to miss many more tonight. He is an outstanding three-point shooter for the Trojans, shooting over 40% from three. And I believe that was a technical just issued. Larry Babcock not having it. Yeah, Larry Babcock calling a technical. It looks like this is against, like, no, it is against Chesterton. Mm -hmm. So will this be... Owen Guest again, as Miles Yekic will head to the line to shoot the technical free throws. Knocks his first one down. They have not changed the board yet, so I'm not sure who. The oh, they called it on Urban. Okay. This one rattles out for Yekic. Yeah, if they haven't changed the board, it might be against uh, Coach Urban. So possession will stay here with Lake Central, which it was their possession anyway. Mm -hmm. They get the two shots. They inbound from side out. Basket here gets it to 10 or within 10. And Urban is still drawing at one of the officials near the scorer's table over there. Yeah, so Larry Babcock, he was the one that called the technical. And Coach Urban now will have to take a seat. And he's perhaps just asking for an explanation for all we know. But nonetheless, he's going to have to coach this one sitting down now. Yekic going inside, giving off to Knopf. Pulls up for three. Just off the mark, trying to fight for that rebound. Chesterton has it, though. Look out. Two-handed jam. Justin Sims. And Owen Guest with a quick steal back to Travis Grayson. Yeah, Yakich with a great crossover creates a top of the key three, but Lake Central doesn't make it. Grayson with a quick outlet to Sims. Sims with the two-hand jam. Guest with the steal. Grayson now at the line. This team comes at you in bunches. This team can throw some flurries, that's for sure. Well, and getting those, those steals is going to be a pivotal thing for Chesterton, especially when you come down the stretch here as Grayson knocks down that free throw. So 31-16 as Mitch Malosnik will check back in the game for Lake Central. Knock them both down. Three for three from the line tonight for Travis Grayson, Lake Central. Going to try to get something here. The score is doubled up on him as Malosnik does step out of bounds there. Trying to get that that pass, and that's like the third time tonight that we've seen some errant passes for Lake Central, so something that definitely, definitely going to be working on here in the near future, I would assume. And yeah. probably a conversation at halftime as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's one of those things where, you know, everyone in the gym understands the score. We all see it, but you can't be sped up. You have to still play composed. You still have to be able to get the ball across the timeline, get it set up into offense, get into the basket area really make it as difficult as you can for this Chesterton Trojan teams, but you make it easy for them when you're turning it over before you can even really get set into, into your offense. So the foul will be on Ethan Knopf, his first, team's sixth. So almost putting Chesterton in the bonus here, which Chesterton will gladly take as Escobedo will check in. Guest feeding up to Sims, has it poked away, goes out of bounds. They're going to say it's going to stay here with Chesterton. Yeah, great effort there by Jaden Clayton there, able to get a hand in there. Poked the ball loose from Sims. Sims caught the ball very deep into the post too, right in the middle there too. Was able to go either way, so a great job defensively by Clayton to help out. Sims gives back to Grayson, off right in front of him. Yeah, it's hard to keep him in that corner as he turns it. Gets middle, creates a three. Put along on that three-point attempt. Beatty bringing it up to Clayton. 
Beatty thought about long range, pulls up just in front of the three-point arch and knocks that down. Yeah, good shot fake, getting to one dribble pull up, long two, but a two nonetheless if you make it. Guest with a three-point shot, no good. Escobedo comes down with the rebound. Beatty moving to that far side of the court, given to Malaznik here now in the corner. Now to Escobedo, tough defense, going to pass it out. Great ball movement by the Indians. And it works out for Malaznik, his third triple of the night. Escobedo running the floor hard, getting the ball and the block, creating, swinging the ball, inside out three. Love to see it. What can Chesterton do to answer this? His guest, top of key. Given off to Carson Parrish. Last Chesterton game I, game I called against Laporte here as well, a foul here against, I believe it'll be against Dorian Beatty. Anyway, Chesterton, last Chesterton game I called. One of the things that was unique in that game is that, and it really showed off just how versatile Travis Grayson is as a player, and Coach Urban called him just, he's special in a lot of different ways because he wasn't the scorer in that game. He was the facilitator in that game to help his teammates out. And that's not, you know, when we first think of Travis Grayson, we're thinking of him as a scorer, but he has so much more to his game than just the scoring. Yeah, he's always had great vision since I've seen him play at the varsity level here in the DAC. He averages six assists as well. And he really is the straw that stirs the drink for this undefeated Chesterton team. He gets guys involved. Like I mentioned, averaging six assists. He averages also a little over three rebounds a game is to go with his 18 points. So he is a game wrecker, a game changer, and in many different ways, like you mentioned. And now he's five for five from the line tonight as well. Another way to really, really help this team out. Clayton with the basketball. Beatty. Trying to find a lane, going up with it strong. Misses, now passing it down. Here's the Guest. Guest tries to feed it out, but finds Ethan Knopf. Here's Dorian Beatty again. Here's for Clayton for three. Knocks it down. That's a big three for Clayton. Clayton has been working on the defensive end, doing a great job in help side doing a great job of guarding Owen Guest, making sure that he's not just a shooter, making sure that he you know, go, goes out, closes out strong on Owen Guest, make him a ball handler and a dribbler, because that's what you want to do against good shooters. He's doing a great job on defense, and it's huge for him to knock down that shot here and make it a 10-point game. Three-point basket to answer, and they do. Owen Guest. As soon as I say that, Owen Guest with a three, he's got blinders on him. He did completely unfazed by that closeout there by Mitch Malaznik and he drills the three. But he, he, he's one of those guys, though, in uh, Owen Guest where you give him enough looks, he's going to start knocking them down. He, he shoots over 40% from three. He's missed a couple uh, three shots in this game, and they were open ones, so it's only he's only due to make one. And so great job there by Chesterton to get him involved and continue to get him involved in this one. Yeah, that was his first points of the game, and it came in a big way. Had brought this to a 10-point game. Now the lead's 13, or 13. Now make it 16 here on another three-point basket, this time by Travis Grayson. Trying to feed this one. Intercepted. Sean Casper steals this one off. Grayson with another opportunity. Going baseline, laying it up, and just rolls off. Ethan Knopf coming down with the rebound. Crosses over. Coming inside, trying to find a lane. Tries to dish it out, but we'll have a foul here against Chesterton. He was trying to dish it off to Mitch Malaznik. Yeah, he realized that when he was making that Euro step that he was not going to be able to get a clean look. Saw the uh, saw a shooter in the corner, try to kick it out of him, but the foul was called. Travis Grayson, though, big three, gets the double crossover, driving on the left side of the court, the baseline, just rims out, but being able to attack and being able, like you said, to affect the game in so many different ways. And that's why they lead this one 40-24 to here in the first half. Colin with the basketball. This one picked off by Grayson, who lays this one home. And sometimes when you see these guys, you forget that they're in high school sometimes, and you realize, hey, this might, this potentially could be a, a five-second call against Lake Central. 
And you forget these guys are in high school sometimes. You think these guys going down the floor, they're just going to jam at home. You get a little amped up, ready for, ready, ready for it. And yeah. They, then they get the layup, and you're like, oh. But that's, they're high school players. Yeah, but you know what, though, too, what you love to see after that layup and transition is being there and guarding the inbounder. Great take there by Mullen after a great pass from the top of the key by Sean Casper. So the lead was just 10 a moment ago. And it has ballooned to 20 now as we wind down this second quarter. Five seconds left. Malaznik for three. Doesn't get it. And Ethan Knopf steps out of bounds. And it'll be Chesterton ball with point two. All right, so your halftime scores. This one will tip and go into the fa go into the, uh, the the fan section there. All right, we're heading to halftime. You're watching Game Night on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Blythe's Team Sports in Valparaiso is a leader in athletics apparel and equipment sales. With in-house production, including screen printing, trophies, embroidery, and more, Blythe's can help you to create the perfect look. For more information, visit them online at teamblythe's.com. Blythe's Team Sports in Valparaiso, where the athletes shop. Hi, I'm Crowell Company's Lantern Man. I'll cover your motorcycle. I'll be with you on the water. I'll be with you on the snow. I'll cover your insurance needs wherever you go. I'll be at Crowell Agency from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. As Crowell Company's Lantern Man, I'm your insurance superhero. Crowell Company's, the insurance professionals in Highland, Merrillville, and Michigan City. Did you know? They decorate over 210,000 cakes a year. Did you know? Their butcher will cut your meat your way. Did you know? They have trained floral designers in store. Did you know? They will make your wedding cake. Did you know? They have a variety of deli bakeable entrees. Did you know? Their online app has coupons and so much more. Who does that? Strack and Van Till. Now you know. From schools to stadiums, hospitals and bridges, everywhere you look, Union Carpenters are building Indiana. With jobs and skilled trades in high demand, there's never been a better time to start building your future. As an apprentice, you'll earn a debt-free college degree, earn while you learn, and receive great benefits like health care and retirement. So what are you waiting for? Visit Carpenters.com to learn more. Visit Carpenters.com and start building your future today. With electrical services from Economy Electric Heating and Cooling, you can radiate the perfect amount of light and energy into your home. From rewiring and code upgrades to ceiling fans, lighting, security, and more, Economy Electric Heating and Cooling's trained electricians will make sure you can enjoy your home on full power all the time. For a free estimate on electrical work, call Economy Electric Heating and Cooling at 219-923-4441, and you can visit them on the web at 4ajobdoneright.com. That's the number 4, ajobdoneright.com. Java Wave at your local Family Express is the perfect way to get your day started or keep you moving at any time. With 12 freshly ground bean-to-cup flavors to choose from, Java Wave at Family Express has just what you're looking for, whether it's hot or iced coffee. To see all of the delicious flavor options and to find a Family Express near you, log on to FamilyExpress.com slash Java Wave. Welcome back to Game Night here on the Region Sports Network. Halftime here at Lake Central. Between the Indians and the Trojans, and the lead says 20, but not maybe a minute and a half, two minutes before we got to half. This was a 10-point game. So you talked about this being a game of runs, Mike. This truly, I mean, basketball truly is a game of runs, and just like that, it can balloon to a 20-point lead at half. Yeah, in the blink of an eye, in the snap of a finger, Chesterton can light a fuse and explode on teams, and that's what they do. They, bl they, they blow up on teams. They, you know, when you look at their win-loss record on the season, obviously people are like, oh, yeah, 14-0, they're a good team. No, but you look at the, the point differential in a lot of these games, and this Mark Urban coach team is very intense and very aggressive, but in a controlled manner. You know, Travis Grayson will get an interception. He'll lay it in. 
in transition, and then what, what's Chesterton doing? They're running right with them, and they're forcing a turnover right. out of bounds underneath, or they're for, forcing, like, you know, that turnover there was a five-second call. And they're always, you know, being able to push onto the gas pedal and really ride and drive this vehicle, and teams really don't have an answer for it. And we're seeing that in Lake Central. Lake Central has a difficult time shooting the three ball throughout the season as it is, and, you know, so when they don't make as many open looks, this one can get, you know... To, this, to the score that we see here, it, it can balloon, like you mentioned earlier in the first half. But, you know, being able to create and being able to get opportunities is everything that they can do and just kind of hope that they fall. But that ha they have to continue to be able to get the ball into the basket area and create opportunities because that's the only success I've seen them have in the half court is when they're able to get the ball into the basket area or they're able to get a one dribble pull up off of a pump fake. But that's not going to continue to happen in the second half with a disciplined team like Chesterton. Yeah, I agree with you. Chester is just such a fun basketball team to watch, and they just they come at you in so many different ways. It's just fun to watch. Travis Grayson leading the way, 18 points already here in this first half. I talked about him being a facilitator last time I saw him. He's, he's doing the facilitating and doing a lot of the scoring tonight as well. And then for Lake Central, the next leading or the leading scorer for them, Mitch Malozic with those three triples. Uh, definitely going to be a guy to focus on in the second half, how much they really try to shut him down and limit his three-point shooting ability. Yeah, you would expect that Coach Urban would do that. You know, and these teams, they know each other so well. You know, not just from, you know, playing each other, but these two coaches, like we mentioned in the pregame and earlier in this one, they're great coaches. They're outstanding coaches. They scout well. They break down film well. They communicate that to their players in practice. They have a great program where their players are able to execute that on a nightly basis. So, yeah, you would expect that, you know, this Chester team is going to get out on Malaznik a little bit more. But at the same time, it's, it's going to be really tough for LC to get him opportunities if they're not, you know, getting the ball into the basket area. They have had opportunities. Miles Jakic can handle the rock, and he has gotten into the paint, and he's drawn a couple defenders, and he's dished out. Jaden Clayton has done a very good job so far on the offensive glass, and same with uh, uh, Brandon Escobedo and Carson Collin, really, too. So they're able to get, they've been able to get some second-chance opportunities, but... You got to knock down shots. Yep, and that's the thing that Coach Malazic is going to be talking to them at the halftime break here. All right, we're going to step aside for just another moment. You're watching Game Night on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Flight's Team Sports in Valparaiso is a leader in athletics apparel and equipment sales. With in-house production, including screen printing, trophies, embroidery, and more, Blyce can help you to create the perfect look. For more information, visit them online at teamblyce.com. Blythe's Team Sports in Valparaiso, where the athletes shop. The team of sports medicine experts at Orthopedic Specialists of Northwest Indiana is committed to getting athletes back in the game with a focus on not only helping patients recover from injuries, but helping improve athletic performance to prevent injuries. Orthopedic Specialists provides the most advanced, comprehensive care to their patients. To learn more about all Orthopedic Specialists can do to help rehab and prevent athletic injuries, visit them on the web at osni.org or call them at 219-923-3300. Orthopedic specialists of Northwest Indiana, providing world-class care to Northwest Indiana for over 20 years. Hi, I'm Crowell Company's Lantern Man. I'll cover your motorcycle. I'll be with you on the water. I'll be with you on the snow. I'll cover your insurance needs wherever you go. I'll be at Crowell Agency from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. As Crowell Company's Lantern Man, I'm your insurance superhero. Crowell Company's, the insurance professionals in Highland, Maryville, and Michigan City. Did you know? Wow, they'll prepare fresh fish while you wait. Did you know? They make over 40,000 donuts from scratch every week? Did you know? They offer 23 different deli platters for your party? Did you know? They have freshly chopped fajita mix ready to cook. Did you know? They have the best fried chicken in the area? Did you know? They offer our signature curbside service 14 hours a day. Strike and Van Till, now you know. Well, welcome back to Game Night here on the Region Sports Network. Mike Brenner here along with Mike Jamia. 
And Mike, uh, yeah, this is a 20-point lead for Chesterton right now, but in that game of runs, we could see something change here, or we can see Chesterton really start to run away with this ball game. We'll just have to see how, how the second half goes. The only way to find out is by playing it, right? Yeah, and the only way for you folks to find out is by continuing to tune in. So we appreciate your viewership. Just before the break, we were talking a little bit about kind of adjustments that both teams could potentially make here. And you're going to have to see those adjustments early in the second half of your Lake Central if you're going to try to get back into this one. So it is a tough hill to climb, but it is a hill that they will try to attempt to climb nonetheless. But, yeah, this Chesterton team is an outstanding team that can, you know, hit you with flurries and in an instant can really, really blow this one up. So as they hold a 20-point lead, we'll see what this Coach Urban team does coming into the second half. You're probably going to look to be aggressive right away. Not sure. Or they can just kind of move the ball around here. But Lake Central, though, I'm curious to see how they come out in this one. I'd like to see them get to the ball, the ball to the basket area a little bit more as they were able to create some opportunities. But... As you know, Chesterton, and as you know, Milosnik, they both make adjustments, so it's all going to come down to execution. I'm trying to think of two players that I want to see kind of step up here in the second half. I think for Chesterton, I want to see a little bit more Chris Mullen involved there, maybe down in the paint a little bit, getting a little high-low action to see him uh, you know, near the, near the blocks and, and trying to get some forced you know, layups down to him. And I think for maybe Lake Central, Brandon Escobedo kind of doing that same thing for Lake Central. He's been a facilitator. He had a great game against Munster the other night. Uh, Lake Central came up short against Munster, but he had a really phenomenal game. I know, I think he, I'm pretty sure he had like 20-something plus points in that one. Uh, so maybe a guy to keep your eye on for Lake Central. We'll have to see how his involvement goes. And then, like I said, for Chester, I'd like to see a little more Chris Mullen as we get started here with this third quarter. Chesterton starts out in his zone here. Clayton feeding down to Colin here, loses that one. Knopf able to clean it up on the baseline, though. So if you're Lake Central, you're trying to get the ball to the elbow, which they do there. you got to turn and face. Jekic pulls up for three, knocks it down. Great job there by Lake Central getting the ball to the elbow. As you can see, Carson Collin, he turns and faces, doesn't see anything in the basket area, able to kick out for an inside-out three. Great shot. Great execution there by Lake Central to start the second half. And, you know, just as I said, I, you know, I keep your eye on Miles Jekic because, you know, he's going to score a lot for Lake Central. That's what, exactly what I said right before we started yeah. the third quarter, right? Yeah, <laughs> and, a, and a steal by Lake Central there, and that is Jaden Clayton with the steal. He's been all over it defensively in this one and has a three also on the offensive end to show for it. So my kid who's a gym rat, he works so hard. Escobedo with it now. Yeah, the effort shows. To Jekic, he trips on the baseline, gives it back to Escobedo, tried to drive, but kind of came up short. He's going to drive in the lane there, but dumps it back out to Colin. Colin going to try to lay it home and does. Strong take there by Colin. So that's the... five points out of the, t out of the, out of the half for mm -hmm. Lake Central. It's Mullen it. here. It's the back tug, rebound comes down to Sims. Sims puts it home. Excellent effort there by Sims. But, yeah, like we talked about at the break, having to come out strong in the second half, Lake Central has to do that. They have any chance in this one. And so far they're on a 5-2 run to start the third quarter. A little delay of game warning against Chesterton there. Here's Jekic bringing it up the floor. Now guarded against Mullen. Escobedo, left side, trying to drive, dribbles, turns, trying to fight his way through, gets fouled on his way up. He'll shoot two. I like that by Escobedo to be able to walk, walk down into the post, be able to establish yourself, make a move. You know, he makes a move to the middle. He's able to draw the contact. He'll be shooting free throws. But you like to see that from this Lake Central team. Well, and with his first foul, of the game for Chesterton, first of this half. Escobedo short on the first free throw. Make sure you stay with us after the game as we'll name the Corral Company's Lantern Man superhero of the game. They have offices open 9 to 7 Monday through Friday and Saturday still too in Highland, Maryville, and Michigan City. 0 for 2 for Brandon Escobedo from the line. Guest bringing it up the floor here. Gives to Mullen. Now to Grayson. Loses that one. We got the ball tipping everywhere on the floor. Picked up by Owen Guest here after the tip. 
Like Central fans obviously want to say that it's an over over the court or the backcourt violation, but there was a tip from Lake Central. Yeah, great active hands nonetheless by the Indians. Really good ball movement by Chesterton here just to try to get around whatever defense Lake Central it seems a little out of sorts here as they give to Mullen. Great caught, great pass. What a feed to Travis Grayson who lays that one home. It's just so technical with Travis Grayson, and it's just it's beautiful to watch. Yeah, he's a, he's a true point guard in the DAC right now, and with a guy like Mullen, is his you know his counterpart there on the offensive end, they can do some very special things. But a strong basket there by Escobedo to respond to the Grayson layup. Mullen gives out to Tyler Parrish. Now to Grayson going to the left elbow has to pull that back out. Yakich on the defense there. Guest. Trying to find the open man, trying to find the open lane. He's got the open three. No good. Colin touches it and he'll stay here with Chesterton. The Lake Central fans obviously clamoring about that one, but we could see from our vantage point here that was clearly off of Colin. Yeah, I mean, both players making an effort at the ball. Colin tips it, it stays here. But, you know, I mean, shocker that Colin's there, you know, for a rebound. He's been, you know, killer on the glass tonight. So good effort there, but you just got to get a stop if you're the Indians. And if you're Chesterton, you got to get the ball in bounds. They do and see if you can get another good look here. Sims trying to feed it down to, or I'm sorry, Mullen trying to feed it down to Sims. He's going to back his way up against Escobedo and put it right home. Just really easy work there by Justin Sims. Yeah, Sims really committed to the baseline there and, you know, went power, able to finish at home. Only a sophomore. Very, very good player for this Chesterton program. Clayton given to Knopf here on the left side, trying to swing it to Collin. Clayton didn't have the move, going through, going against Mullen, knocks it home, but it's going to be a charge against Lake Central. Yeah, that's tough there. Collin caught, caught that ball, yeah, caught that ball, never looked uh, to score with it, and immediately kicked it back out. They get a good downhill drive, but, you know, block charge call, it's a charge there. So back on the defensive end, they work to get back into this one. That's the second foul on Jaden Clayton, by the way. Both teams with one here in the half. We're about five seconds away from the midway point of this third quarter. Now oh, we'll just call it the midway point at this point. Yeah. And Nathan Laird wonders why I never include him on the... <laughs> he's he's calm, he's calm, you know drawing at me next to me. Sims going all the way to the rack. It doesn't go down, but there will be a foul. We'll see who it's against here. Yeah, you know, I've been talking about catching, the, and I, you know, I, I may sound like a broken record by the end of this one, but catching the ball at the elbow, turning and facing the basket. Right there. If you want to you know, rewind it 10 seconds for those of you watching at home, that's exactly what Justin Sims just did. Caught it, turned and faced, got a strong drive, and that's what you need to be able to do to be able to control a lead or to cut a deficit, is getting the ball into that basket area, getting those high percentage looks, drawing contact, getting free throw attempts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mitch Malosnik has checked into the game for Lake Central. Sims knocks down that free throw. Jekic going against Escobedo. Jekic is going to go all the way coast to coast, try to lay that one home. There is a... There was a block, but it, there was a foul underneath as well. Yeah, you got to be careful guarding Jekic 90 feet away from the floor because he can, you know, turn in an instant and fly to the rim. It's exactly what he does there. First foul on Justin Sims. So this sends Miles Jekic to the line. Can I get the first one to fall? Make sure you stay with us after the game as we will name the IKORCC play of the game. Brought to you by the Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio Regional Council of Carpenters. That's another thing Lake Central's got to be working on here in the near future is free throws. Not having a solid night from the charity stripe. And that contributes to the 20-point deficit here. They're not doing themselves many favors when it comes to free opportunities or unforced errors. Travis Grayson. I'm going to say no basket here. The foul on the floor as Grayson was scurrying to the basket. And the foul is going to be on Miles Jekic. That is his third of the game. 
So you mentioned uh, at halftime talking about two players that you want to see to look to make an impact. Carson Parrish is one of those guys off the bench for Chesterton that I want to see how he plays here in this second half with the score at what it is. And he's out there. He's also out there with George Veritas, another Chesterton Trojan that I want to see in this second half. So I guess those are my two guys. Oh, Ethan Knopf trying to slam it home with a one-handed jam, but that one will not count. It'll go against Lake Central as Knopf and Carson Parrish have a friendly exchange. So the HSAA is getting their point across in the sportsmanship effort that they've been making. And it's a solid one at that. Yeah, I mean... Talk about guys to watch, and certainly I mean, you could talk about really anybody on this Chester team. Correct. There's just they're so deep, and it's just a, a fun team to watch, and a team that I hope can can go far into postseason play. Trying to feed this one, meeting off there like a brick wall. Here's a three point basket knocked down by Tyler Parrish. Yeah, and George Veritas, great job of being strong with the basketball, catching it, absorbing some contact down on the block and getting a nice pass right into the shot pocket. Inside out three, and that's another one for Chester as they're making it rain. Dorian Beatty trying to answer, hits the front iron. Trying to feed this one up, it gets lost. Beatty comes down with it. They got numbers. Giving it to Escobedo with the bump. Went a little too strong trying to put that one home, but he'll go to the line and shoot two again. Foul is on. It's Justin Sims, his second. That one rattles around and doesn't go down for Escobedo. I'm going to do a little math here, so I have to probably take my shoes off to do this. <laughs> Guest checks into the game for the Trojans. Out comes Sims after the foul. Three for nine from the line right now for Lake Central. Make it three for ten. There we go. Easy math for you. It's a round number. Correct, and that's I could use all my fingers yeah. for that, so no shoes were removed in the process of doing that math. This one's stolen away by Jaden Clayton, though. He's going to try to go home. Left hand. Can't get it to go. Trying to clean it back up there. Here's Escobedo putting it up. He'll go back to the line. Couldn't get that one to fall. That's one of the frustrating things. You work so hard to get those offensive rebounds, and that was just three offensive rebounds for Lake Central. Couldn't come up with any points, and now you go to the line where you're not having as strong of a night. And for Brandon Escobedo alone, 0 for 4, got to try to start turning things around here if you're going to get back into this ball game. Yeah, finishing at the rim, that's what that is. You know, you work on it in practice, in practice finishing at the rim in transition. I mean, a great steal there by Jaden Clayton. I mean, I've called his name, and we've called his name many times tonight on the defensive end, and he's continuing to impress there defensively. And he had the right idea, too, you know, going across the lane, going up with his left, and it just rattled, and it just kind of rimmed out. So gets that one to fall. So just under two minutes to play here in the third quarter. Get this to Owen Guest to bring it up the floor. Feed now is to Veritas, as you mentioned on the floor. Get back out here to Parrish. Fermanick in the game now. Nick Fermanick in the game as well for Chesterton. Parrish trying to put that one home. It looked like Ethan Knopf there to block that one out. Yeah, great move by Parrish to get himself an opportunity, but Knopf was reading that help side the entire time, able to time that up and block that ball out of bounds. Parrish with the top of key, and they're going to get a foul here. It appears to be going the opposite direction here, so we'll see exactly who he fouls on, because it was a foul away from the ball. It's going to be on George... Veritas. Mullen checks back into this one for Veritas after the foul call. Buck 23 to go in the third. Dorian Beatty for the Indians, trying to find an open man. Just really solid defense by Chesterton here. Can't find that open spot that he wants. Mitch Malosnik. Now to Collin. 
Yeah, Chester does a great job of cutting off drives, especially against a team like Lake Central that likes to do that. We're going to have a travel call against Carson Collin. Wasn't a fan of the call. He wasn't, Yeah, I should say. I wonder if he has a stake in this one or not. <laughs> that sounds like a good dinner option tonight, actually, oh, by yeah. the way. Chris Mullen for Chesterton. Yeah, I already ate. Uh, there's this yes. there's this pie place here. Uh, there it is. Not, not With 40 away. seconds to go in the third quarter, yeah. it makes its debut. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of pie, Chester's making it look easy as pie here as Mullen with the power label. Oh, Mullen waits for the defense, drops it home, and gets the foul. What presence of mind to wait for two defenders to clear and then drop it home and then still get an and one. Senior. 6'4", quarterback of the football team. The the dude no he's a he's a true he's a true gamer. He <laughs> he's really an is. Athlete. He is. It knocks down and gets the three point play. The foul, by the way, was on Mitch Malosnik. Is is cheesecake a pie? Uh, I've been told no. Really? Colin going to the window. Can't get that one to go. Feed is ahead. Carson Parrish. Looking to dump it off. Does so to Casper for three. He knocks it down. When it rains, that's, it pours. That's his second triple of the game, and the lead is up to 30. Dorian Beatty. He pulls up from three to answer. Hits the back tug as time expires here in the third. You're watching Game Night on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. From schools to stadiums, hospitals, and bridges, everywhere you look, Union Carpenters are building Indiana. With jobs and skilled trades in high demand, there's never been a better time to start building your future. As an apprentice, you'll earn a debt-free college degree, earn while you learn, and receive great benefits like health care and retirement. So what are you waiting for? Visit Carpenters.com to learn more. Visit Carpenters.com and start building your future today. Hi, I'm Crowell Company's Lantern Man. I'll cover your motorcycle. I'll be with you on the water. I'll be with you on the snow. I'll cover your insurance needs wherever you go. I'll be at Crowell Agency from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. As Crowell Company's Lantern Man, I'm your insurance superhero. Crowell Companies, the insurance professionals in Highland, Merrillville, and Michigan City. Start of the fourth quarter here at Lake Central. Make sure you stay with us after the game. As we'll name the Region Sports Network Blue Collar Player of the Game. Brought to you by the Region Sports Network. Mike, did you know we are the only game in town? I'm aware. Okay. I just want to make sure, just like cheesecake is not a pie. Now, <laughs> cheesecake's a pie. I'm going to tell you why. And I didn't try to rhyme there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're going back to the game. <laughs> cheesecake is a pie because it has a crust. It has a pie crust. And it has a custard filling, so it is, in my opinion, I believe it is a custard pie. It is not a cake. And so, like many things that are unexpected, we see. But then there are very some things that are very expected, and that's what we see here with Chesterton. Trying to feed with down to Owen Guest. Gets the bucket and the foul. Do I dare ask if a hot dog is a sandwich? Do I dare start that conversation? No, we won't do that. Okay. I feel like that's a tougher question than the previous. Foul is on Jaden Clayton, his third. That is the team's sixth free, free throw was no good for a guest. For you folks listening and watching the game on regionsportsnetwork.com and on Facebook all around the world, if you want to chime in on our conversation, please enter the comments. Guest with the basketball given to Travis Grayson. Is cheesecake a pie? I'm, t I'm trying to steer the ship one direction, and you're completely pulling the... the the other direction. <laughs> They're moving the ball around. I, I love it. They're moving the ball around. The folks at home can see. Guess working one on one. I like this opportunity here with Sims, isolated. He's been, it's been worked really well for him all night long against Brandon Escobedo and it's a little cross court action there to Grayson going up against Smith, laying that one home. Can't get it to go. That just seems to be like one of those things that's magic. This one tapped out of bounds. It'll be like central ball. You know, we talk a lot in different games about who wants who wants it more. Yes, the lead is big for Chesterton right now, but both teams really, really battling right there, which tells me that 
even though Lake Central's down big, they still are hungry for this game. We mentioned in the pregame, Dave Malazna coach team, Mark Urban coach team, they know no other way but besides to play hard. And, and you know, I really like that Sims uh, opportunity and that look uh, isolated there because it, with the score being what it is in the fourth quarter, you want to be able to get some good you know, opportunities to be able to play one-on-one -on -one because Sims is going to be one of those guys knocking one down, Jake Smith who's going to have to play really well if they want to make a deep run in the tournament. Trying to feed down low, knocked out of bounds. Really aggressive by Mitch Malaznik there to knock that one out of bounds. Yeah, great job defensively by Malaznik to stay with Tyler Parrish off ball and get a good deflection. Grayson looking for... The feeder inbounds. He gets it back here, trying to drive into the lane. Gives up to Tyler Parrish. He drives into the lane now. We got body contact, and then it'll be a block against Smith. And Lake Central fans here not happy with the call. They're likely asking for consistency, right, because they've seen a couple calls go uh, wrong their way. But each call stands on its own individually. The official calls it a blocking foul. So Parrish with a chance with an and one. But I really like, though, that... That action coming out of the out of bounds underneath. As he misses, getting him an opportunity to be isolated one on one on the wing, and he takes it strong rather than shooting that three because it wasn't there. So good execution by the Trojans to start in the fourth quarter. Smith really trying to make an effort there, gets his own shot there and puts it back home. Misses the shot, gets the steal off the rebound from Chesterton and puts it back home. Jake Smith having himself. A little go here in this quarter. Yeah, you love to see that from Jake Smith. He's a sophomore standing at 6'5". Go get some work, big man. You love to see it. It's 22 points now for Travis Grayson in this one. As well, a foul here against Chesterton. This foul is on the floor with 5.55 to go here in the fourth. <laughs> Grayson checks out. Round of applause from the Chesterton faithful for him. Mitch Malaznik with the ball. Now Jaden Clayton pulls up. This will be a three-point basket just off the mark. Sims comes down with the rebound. Now Chesterton in transition. Owen Guest. Sims going to fight his way for a bucket. Gets it off the window. That Justin Sims. is a really tough basket by Sims. Catches it, essentially takes one dribble, two long, big steps, absorbs the contact, falling away, knocks it down off glass. He's got nine points here in the second half, 16 total in the game. Jekic going baseline, dishes it out to Malaznik for three. It's a little long. Jake Smith fighting for that rebound, goes up and puts it home. Jake Smith playing well in the fourth quarter he, as he gets some tick here. Making seven, the most of it. Seven points for him. All coming in this fourth quarter. Sims goes back home and dumps it home. That's 11 points here in the second half. We'll have a timeout taken, and it'll be a full timeout, so we'll step aside. You're watching Game Night of the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. With electrical services from Economy Electric Heating and Cooling, you can radiate the perfect amount of light and energy into your home. From rewiring and coat upgrades to ceiling fans, lighting, security, and more, Economy Electric Heating and Cooling's trained electricians will make sure you can enjoy your home on full power all the time. For a free estimate on electrical work, call Economy Electric Heating and Cooling at 219-923-4441, and you can visit them on the web at 4ajobdoneright.com. That's the number 4, ajobdoneright.com. Welcome back to game night here on the Region Sports Network. 4.50 to go here in the fourth quarter. And Nathan, we are in dangerous territory here. Mike Shamia is checking his phone. I'm nervous about what he's looking for. No, 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 no. <laughs> I just got a notification, notification on my phone. Someone asked, what is the place that I went to uh, for dinner tonight uh, as we're talking about pie? And uh, I'll just not respond there because I'm working, right? When I'm on the clock, I don't really, you know, text back. Sorry, folks at home. But, yeah, I would say this. I got a French silk pie. I got a French silk pie for the game tonight. Always when I'm in the area here. Miles Jekic with the basketball. Giving it to Malaznik in the corner. 
Jake Smith posting up hard. Feed the big, big fella. Ethan Good Knopf take. going home. Just a little too strong on the layup, and now we got bodies hitting the floor. Brandon Escobedo, or I'm sorry, that's Colin, excuse me. Colin hits the floor. We'll see who the foul is going to No, that is Escobedo. My apologies. Yeah, Knopf with a strong drive there with his left hand downhill. And then Escobedo again with, you know, providing the Indians with a second chance opportunity here. And we've called his name many times as he goes to the charity stripe once again. So Escobedo to the line. Make sure you stay with us after the game as we will name the Crowell Company's Lantern Man superhero of the game. Brought to you by the Crowell Company. proud to recognize the superheroes on the basketball court. That Crowell Company commercial that we run, are we, are we still running the old school one? That is one of the most iconic commercials in the history of Northwest Indiana. I don't disagree with you on that. Although I prefer anything that's narrated by Nathan Laird. Personally. I do. That Family Express <laughs> commercial, that's a, that's a modern day crowd company when it comes to legendary status, in my opinion. It's amazing that I just watched Nathan's head grow about an inch <laughs> on that comment. <laughs> and we'll have no shot on that one. Jordan Hughes in the game for Chesterton. And that's going to be a one and one situation as we are now at eight fouls for Lake Central. So Jordan Hughes takes a trip to the free throw line. Foul, by the way, was on Ethan Knopf, his third. His senior. Hughes knocks the first one down. Also, make sure you stay with us after the game as we'll name the, uh, the uh, IKORCC play of the game. Brought to you by the Indiana, Kenta Indiana Kentucky Ohio Regional Council of Carpenters. Learn more at IKORCC.com. Con. Two for two from the line for Hughes. Dorian Beatty bringing it up the floor for the Indians. Looking for an open player, but everyone's kind of covered downfield. Hughes doing a good job defensively in the post guarding Smith. Brett good Spain. help side defense by Hughes. Brett Spain in the game for Lake Central here. And so Hughes doing a good job defensively after earning himself a trip to the line. This will be Carson Parrish to bring it up the floor. Telling Hughes, you over there. That works out to help the, the ball movement. Yep, pass and cut. Furminick in the game for Chesterton as well. Sean Casper called his name quite a bit. George Veritas. Veritas. Good job, too, defensively there by Beatty to cut it off and keep it there in the corner. And a double dribble here against Hughes. I mean, Escobedo held his breath because he was thinking maybe he was going to get called for it. There was a little bump there. And both teams able to get some good film here with three and a half minutes to play. You see now checking into the game is Greg Guernsey. Sophomore. I give credit to the fans here. Not uh, seen a few people heading for the exits, but most people are here to stick this one out and watch this one till it's finale. Great pass there. Great extra pass there. Spain for three. He gets in the mix. Around the world, and it goes to Spain. This is and, our final destination. And in less than 90 days. And in less than, I love it. Gotta love it. <laughs> That's what you get when you get two social studies teachers uh, broadcasting a game for you. <laughs> Guernsey with it, picks up his dribble back there, doesn't want to do that, but he, he'll move off ball, get into the corner. Trying to feed this one home. Hughes with a nice rebound here, fighting this one off. We'll have a tie-up here. Again, these guys still fighting here. As you mentioned, it's, uh, it's one of those things where, you know, you got the coaches and they don't know any different. As Xavier Williams has also checked into the game for Lake Central. Start running back here on the team. We'll have a foul here against Lake Central. And this is their ninth, so it'll be a one and one situation still. And just as I mentioned uh, Williams' name, he gets called for that foul, by the way. Oh, we won't do the one and one situation because of player control foul.
Chesterton passing around the perimeter here, eating some clock up before they get their, their shot to go. And this is a good spot for if you're, you know, Coach Urban watching some of your younger players a little bit or guys who don't get as much floor time, see what kind of depth you still have in case things go awry maybe later on down the tournament. And let, watch these guys get some good sets here. What a save in bounds, but it goes off and it'll be Lake Central ball. What a save, though, over there by Casper. Two minutes here. Smith with it at the wing. Gets it to Beatty. Beatty off the right piece of the iron. No good. Almost tapped back. Smith with the offensive rebound. Gets another inside out three opportunity. No. Smith with another tap back. And we'll see. I believe it's going to be Chesterton ball here. All right, we got about 90 seconds here. Do you got your, uh, we got to start thinking about our award winners here, partner. Uh, you got those in mind? I do. I okay. do. Okay. And I'm we, can st we can go ahead and start. Let's look at our crowd company's Lantern Man Superhero of the Game. This one's going to stay in bounds. Brought to you by the crowd companies. They are the insurance superheroes. And who do you got for that award tonight, sir? Travis Grayson. And that was the favorite pick uh, this evening in terms of, you know, who was most expected to turn in a performance such as that. But he had his average. He had a scoring average at half. He had 18 points at half. That's what he averages per game basis. And he was able to get it done in all phases tonight. Uh, had some very big steals as well as assists, fac facilitating the rock as well, getting his team out to a big lead, and was able to sit down in this one and watch the rest of it. All right, there's your Crown Company Slancher Man superhero of the game. Let's go ahead and go with our IKRCC play of the game. Brought to you by the Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio Regional Councils of Carpenter, Council of Carpenters. Excuse me, learn more at IKRCC.com. I'm going to take this one, partner, if you don't, not, if you don't mind. I do and not. That, and that was with Justin Sims back in the second quarter with 418 left to play. The two-handed jam that kind of really set the tone, if you will, for this Chesterton team getting as he got that one to, to flush that one home with uh, a little more than halfway through that second quarter left. Yeah, absolutely. Big turning point in the game in terms of momentum, and that's what this one was. This was a game of momentum as we see this be a 30-point ball game in the closing seconds. All right, let's name our Region Sports Network blue-collar player of the game, watched by the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. I'll go with Jaden Clayton for the Lake Central boys basketball team. Uh, in a losing effort, but Jerry West once won a finals MVP in a losing effort, so I don't see why not as the precedent's already been set. So Jaden Clayton would be my pick as, uh, for his defensive effort. Uh, he had a few steals, but also being able to play great help side defense and, you know, for some uh, ball reversals for the Chesterton Trojans, making it difficult for them. And they also uh, drill in a three uh, to make it a 10-point ball game uh, in the first half. So he would be my blue-collar player of the game. All right, excellent. Our executive producer, Chris Ramirez, coordinating producer, Nathan Laird, your broadcast crew tonight, myself, Michael Brander, and Mike Jamia, your game producer as well tonight with full and double duty, Nathan Laird, doing all the good stuff, and then Bob Guerrero on camera for a new concept video as well. All right, big thanks to Chris Enyart here, the AD at Lake Central, and a big thanks to Coach Urban and Malaznik, head coaches for Chesterton and Lake Central, respectively, for their help in getting prepped for tonight's ball game. Big thanks to you, the viewers, on Facebook.com slash Region Sports and RegionSports.com. Without you guys, we wouldn't be able to do what we do, so thank you very much for tuning in. All right, that'll wrap things up. You've been watching Game Night on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. <laughs>